I'm Benji Taylor and you're watching Full 52 TV. Hi there, Dave Forrest here for Full 52 TV. Welcome to episode 7. Um, so, that weekend just gone, on the Sunday, I travelled to Birmingham for the Excellent Lads Convention. It's a one day event. Uh, organised by the same people who bring you the Wizard Product Review, which some of you may have seen as a YouTube channel, it's very popular. Uh, and Dave and Craig uh, had me up on stage doing a bit. I hung up with, uh, hung, hung out with Andy Gladwin, Owen Packard, uh, my mate Liam Montier, more from him later in this episode, and a whole bunch of people that I'm probably not mentioning. Lee Smith was there, it was good to see him. Uh, a, lot, a lot of guys that uh, it, was, it was great to see again. Um, there was some footage of me doing the bit on stage. <laughs> it's not particularly great footage, but uh, here it is anyway. Have a look. If you want to cheat at cards uh, in Vegas, you might want to try this. Well, you have to be subtle, okay? You have to be subtle. And so you're going to subtly mark the card so that you can tell what the card is from behind. See what I mean? Not from behind, from the back, by looking at the back. So what you're going to do is you're going to subtly Sort of place a crease in the card, right? But subtle like that. That's subtle. Yeah, that that's is. Subtle as a sledgehammer. And in case uh, you think that's not subtle enough, and you might miss it in the dark casino light, you can give it another crease, like so. That like crease to you, Craig? Yeah, it's definitely good. Now here's the thing: if I open it up, you'll now be able to tell from the back that that's your card, right? When you see it get dealt, you'll know that's the king of diamonds. Yeah. Wouldn't you? You can trace it. <laughs> There's no way that's going to be looking at it. Before. If you choose to employ these techniques, you're going to have to know what to do in case you get caught. Alright? And this is what you do if you get caught. If anybody uh, thinks for one moment that you're cheating, then here's what you do. You take the pieces, where are they? You take the pieces like this and you put them back roughly back together where they should go, right? So you sort of line up the edges as best as you can, which would be about there. Then you rub it like this, and you hope no one's looking as you stick them back together. Strange. <laughs> <laughs> Two pieces to go, of course. Here's what you're going to do with the next piece. Same thing again, you're just going to put it roughly where it goes. So you're going to line it up. It's going to be about there. And you place them together like this, and you don't cover them up in the style of Danny Garcia. You just rub. And you stick back together. <laughs> now at this point, you're probably thinking I'm using a duplicate. I'm not using a duplicate. I wouldn't do that. Here comes the last piece. The most difficult, of course, because you have two tone edges. Oh, yeah, of this comes here like this. And this is the first part along here. Like that. Sort of like that. When that bit begins to stick, you have to do this edge. Like that. Um, let's just check this was a permanent marker. It does say permanent marker there. Yeah. And is that your initials, David? It is. How to cheat your cards in Vegas, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. That's right. You got the whole stuff coming out. You the tricks single-handedly for every single hole trick out. That's it. That's it. Can you show me a hole? I'll show you a trick with it. That's <laughs> and um, I'm going to shut this hole now yeah. before I get myself in trouble. <laughs> and uh, I'm going to leave. Yeah, is that it? Can I? Can I? Can I go? Oh, that's that's it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so there you go. I know you can see much in the clip, but hopefully you get a sort of feel uh, for the type of event that the Lads Convention is. It's all very laid back, and it's a lot of fun. Um, while I was there, I met up with my buddy Liam Montier. Uh, Liam's one of my favourite creators. He's a very prolific guy. He's put out lots of stuff. He actually creates a lot more stuff than he ever releases, and uh, I've been privy to some of that, and some of it is just incredible. And uh, Liam recently teamed up with John Bannon. The John Bannon is one of my greatest influences in magic. I think he's certainly one of the best uh, creators of commercial 
Card Magic in the world today and I remember reading his books when I first started getting into uh, magic a bit more seriously. I was probably a year in and I was buying books and John Barnes books were among some of the some of the, the, the ones I read at that time and they just changed everything for me. So I, I'm a big fan. And uh, recently they put out a booklet together called Triabolical. Triabolical I think it's called. And it's three effects based around a count of uh, of John Bannon's uh, sort of display count, false false. Dis I think it's called the bullet display count or something like that. I'm probably getting all that wrong, <laughs> but it's a very clever move, and they developed three tricks around it. And uh, I caught up with Liam at Lads, and uh, here is what he had to say. Check it out. Hi, I'm Liam Montier, and you're watching Full Fifty Two TV. Dave Forrest here for Full Fifty Two TV, and we're here with Liam Mortimer, which I believe is. What he's now called. Uh, here he is. Yeah, thanks Liam. for that, David and Craig. That's awesome. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Yourself, David? Yeah, very well, very well. Now, you're about to show us a trick, I believe, Liam, which is a collaboration between you and the Bannon. That is correct. Right, so tell us quickly, how, how did that come about? How did you end up writing a book uh, and publishing it with the almighty John Bannon? Uh, well, it bordered on harassment, really. Uh, I just kept on pleading and begging and quite a strict letter writing campaign on my behalf and eventually uh, he relented and uh, we bounced around some ideas with his awesome count which is the bullet party count. The bullet party count and all this uh, you're about to show us a trick but this is available in a book that you've co-published called? Uh, Triabolical. Triabolical and that's available at? Uh, you can get it at tricktastic.com if you're in the UK or johnbannonmagic.com if you're in the US. Kudos, awesome. he, he can't say that without smiling. <laughs> So uh, you're going to show us one of the things from the book now? Yeah, yeah, I'd love to. Brilliant, bring it on. Awesome. Well, this is uh, more to warn you about a scam that's going around, really, which is like the old three-card Monty or the old Find the Lady or whatever. Uh, but this is really tempting for you to go for because it looks like the cards are marked, and they are marked, so it doesn't seem like it's a game that you can lose. And it's like Find the Lady in that the Queen is the money card, that's the one that you're after, the Queen of Hearts. And if you, you nail that card, you win, but if you get one of the Jokers, uh, then you lose. So it's very similar to all the other versions. Often they'll make it seem even fairer by removing one of the Jokers as well, which means you've just got the same odds as like three card Monty or what have you. But the moment you place your money on the Queen card, that's when it all goes wrong because they'll say, which Queen card did you mean to bet on? It doesn't actually matter which of the Queen cards you bet on because you'll lose. The money card is down here. That's the Queen of Hearts. And although these aren't the Queen of Hearts, they're pretty close because they're the other three Queens to make a full set. And you can check those out, make sure they're all okay. A fairly awesome trick, I would have to agree. So that's from awesome. the new book, uh, Triabolica. Liam, I hope that we get uh, some more time. I'd like to get you back on the show for another awesome. episode and uh, have you, uh, you know, do something else for us. But thank you so much for being on Full 52 TV. That'd be great. I look forward to seeing uh, you soon. Brilliant. Cheers, mate. Ta no worries. So there you go, that was uh, Liam on his collaboration with John Bannon and I think you'd have to agree, a great trick, right? I mean, seriously cool trick. The other two tricks in the book are just as good and it's a really nicely produced little book um, and it comes with cards and stuff that you need to perform the effects. I'm told that it's almost out of stock and uh, that is understandable uh, because whenever John Bannon puts his name on something it's guaranteed to go out of stock. But um, if you can still get one, here are the places to get it. You can get it at Liam's website, which is tricktastic.com. Or you can get it at John's website, which is johnbannonmagic.com or something. I'm probably getting that wrong as well. But it'll be coming up on, on the screen right now. So go either here or here. And, uh, and go and buy this book. Uh, you'll be very glad that you did. Okay, so now to the free effect. I've got a free effect for you, um, and this is something that I used to do a lot. Uh, it's like I said, you, you can you can play it in so many different ways. I used to do it with a small prediction card and an envelope, um, but you can also sell it as like any card, any number. So uh, let's take a look. Okay, so in addition to this uh, deck of cards, I have one blue backed prediction card, which we'll leave here. Um, I'll now have to get rid of the box. So we'll do that now. And uh, I'll see if there's any jokers in here that we might want to get rid of. Okay, so uh, the idea is simple. I'm going to shuffle the cards and uh, you're going to say stop. I'm going to try and influence uh, you to say stop at a very specific 
a location. I'm going to turn cards face up one at a time, just like this. And then whenever you feel the urge, just say stop. Stop. So they stop you right here. You can say, do you want to go one card further? And let's say they do. Okay, perfect. Now look, from all these face-up cards as they passed you by, um, none of them appealed to you. This is where you stopped us. If you have kept on going, we'd have had, again, different cards here and there. But uh, the insane thing is that you stopped me right here on the Queen of Hearts. And uh, my prediction card over here just happens to be the Queen of Hearts. Alright, so the explanation for this uh, is simply one one move. Now, I did say it's on any card at any number, and I'll show you that variation in a minute. But this uh, this version works great. You need one uh, blue-backed prediction card. In this case, it's the Queen of Hearts. Uh, then you need one uh, vanishing card case. Uh, you need to remove the Jokers from the pack. And what you've done is you've set up your Queen of Hearts in the deck to be second from top, alright? So it's here, second from top, to match your prediction. The rest of it is, is simple. You, you say, here's a prediction card, uh, and you can fall shuffle at this point, a jog shuffle, if you want to, uh, you want to fling one of those in. Uh, what you could also do, if you're familiar with these techniques, is to crimp the Queen of Hearts, all right? Let them shuffle, then take the deck back, move it back to second position and do it from a deck they shuffled. Uh, that is how I used to do it. Uh, but this will work for now. You're going to uh, push over the top card while you take a break under the next one down and turn it up. It will be whatever card's on top. But now you have a double, right? Your force card is here. So you're going to pull that back. That's both cards. And you're going to keep on turning cards face up like this. And you say any time you like, say stop. Now you want to try and sell this a bit, build it up, try and make out that you're going to uh, force them to stop or uh, you know, have a think about whichever part of line you think might be suitable. Uh, and then when eventually they do say, say stop, you say, do you want to go one more? Because you can afford to do that. Uh, remember your force card is here face down under all these face up cards. So all you do is you push them flush and you say, look at all these cards you could have had. All these went by and you eventually stop me here. This is of course the queen because it's just been added. It was under here when you push forward. It now becomes the next face down card. So what I like to do is sort of take it here and say, you stop me right here on this one. But if you went further, we would have had different cards. You know, and we could have kept going like this. And it sort of sells the idea that they stopped you right there in the centre. Um, place, place the card down on the table. Um, turn over your prediction card. I, I was hoping you would stop me on the Queen of Hearts. What card did you stop me on? And they of course tell you it was the Queen of Hearts. Alright, so uh, I don't underestimate it. Lay people uh, really enjoy that trick. Now I did say any card at any number. For that, disperse with the... Uh, with the, the odd back card and what you do in this case is you have a card selected alright uh, in this case the ace of spades and you control that card to second from top so uh, you might use tilt or something like that what you could do is control it to the top uh, via the double undercut again check out episode 3 for details on that and then double undercut one more card from the bottom to the top and that will put the selection and uh, the second posi position from the top. Either way, this is where you want their card second from top. I know you just ask for a number. You see, you're just pick. You're just thinking of any card. You can shuffle the deck. Again, you can crimp their selection, control it back to this position, and say, "Give me a number between, you know, one and fifty-two." You might want to just keep it a bit more punchy and say between, uh, you know, ten and forty or something like that. And either way, you do the exact same thing again. Say, wouldn't it be amazing? One, two, three, and let's say they said 12. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. All these cards, eleven cards, that's the twelfth one there. That would be 13, 14, 15. If you'd have said a different number, you would have got a different card. You can show all the cards and then finally reveal that their card has shown up at the number that they chose. And there is a pretty much, I mean, one of the easiest versions of any card, any number available. But again, for lay people, they're going to love it. Um, there you have it. I do hope you uh, have some fun with this little move. I invented a lot of stuff using it. Uh, it's very practical and very versatile. Uh, so there you go. Have fun with it.
if you're at all interested in the vanishing box part of the effect that I just taught, uh, the good news is it's a free bonus effect on my latest download, uh, which is called Box Flip. Now let me tell you briefly what the effect of Box Flip is. It's an old effect of mine, it's a perfect opener. Uh, and basically what happens is you take the deck from the box, put the box away, they have a card signed, it goes back in the deck, you claim that you've made it travel to the box in your pocket. When you go in there, um, you've actually got the deck, and when they look back at where the deck was, now the box is in its place, you reach inside the box and the signed card is inside. So it's like a super clean transposition between the box and the deck, and it's also a card to impossible location because the card ends up inside the card case. Um, the best news about the effect box flip is there is no sleight of hand, all right? It's 100% slight free, okay? No sleight of hand whatsoever. It is self-working. It uses a regular deck, and uh, in the download I teach you how to make two very cool gimmicks that allow this whole thing uh, to work. One of the gimmicks also allows you to banish the card case. So that is box flip. Uh, do stop by www.full52.com and check it out. Okay, so the winner to last week's competition to win the Master Push-Off uh, DVD, the double DVD by Andy Gladwin. Um, what you had to do was say whether or not uh, Harry's gag was funny or not. Um, I have to say I'm quite surprised by some of the answers. I thought it would have been, <laughs> I thought it would have been one-way traffic in one direction, but some of you actually thought that was funny. <laughs> the correct answer, of course, is that it wasn't funny. And if you if you say, if you guessed correctly, I mean, who am I to decide what you find funny? All right, but uh, I have to say, I <laughs> I think the gag's terrible. So for me, uh, it was only those who guessed correctly that I thought it was awful. <laughs> and uh, from all those who got that answer correct, uh, this guy was picked at random. Well done, sir. Send me a message through YouTube. Give me your postal address. And the Master Push-Off DVD is on its way to you. Okay, new competition time. Project Zero. Double DVD. All tricks involving holes. Hmm. Sounds like a pretty boring disc, right? It's not. It's really good. There's a lot of interesting stuff on here. Uh, and it just means that all the tricks in some way involve a hole. Sometimes the hole moves. Sometimes the holes multiply. Sometimes they vanish. Uh, there's, there's, you know, sometimes a false hole becomes a real hole. There's a lot of good stuff on it. Um, so what do you have to do to win? You have to favourite this episode, and you have to visit. There are links coming up on stage. Uh, on stage, <laughs> there are links coming up on screen right now. Visit those links, and like the video and leave a comment. Visit the links, leave a comment, and like the video. And from everyone who does that. Uh, someone will be picked at random to win the Project Zero DVD. Plus, five lucky runners-up will receive a free uh, download from www.fool52.com. Um, good luck. That's it for this week. Uh, this has been episode seven. Thank you for watching and participating in the competitions and for leaving all your comments. Um, you know, it's what keeps me <laughs> coming back and doing more episodes. And I'm actually quite enjoying myself now. Full 52 TV seems to be taking off. Fingers crossed, touching wood. All right, so that's all for now. I am Dave Forrest for Full 52 TV. I'll see you next time.